Now to make this pomegranate wine, I'll be using the following. I have roughly 10 pounds, or approximately 18, pomegranates. I have four cups, or approximately one liter, of granulated sugar. This time around, I'm just going to be using bread yeast for both our yeast nutrient and as our fermenting yeast. Having a good heavy spoon or a nice wooden rod would be helpful to help beat out some of the seeds inside the pomegranates. Now, one method of extracting the juice from the seeds is to use a potato masher, or if you have a blender, or if you have a food processor, whatever works for you to extract the juice, that's what you use. Now, since I don't have a fine mesh strainer, but I do have fine mesh straining bags, I'll be using a straining bag to help squeeze out as much of those juice as possible. You'll need a gallon of clean filtered water at the ready. We won't be using that much, but it's good to have on hand. Now, in this particular case, we'll be using a Demijohn Powerboy jug, recycled wine jug, take your pick, to ferment our wine. Now, it would also be helpful if you had a secondary jug, carboy, demijohn, or in this case, recycled apple juice bottle, to help uh, continue on with fermentation while we later on in the weeks coming up, rack from our primary fermenter into our secondary fermenter. Of course, we're going to need an airlock with bung. Going to be using an eight-quart pot with tight-fitting lid. It will be helpful, although not essential, to have a hydrometer with testing tube to help determine our alcohol levels or to determine if there's going to be any problems with fermentation down the road. And, of course, we want to make sure that all of our equipment has been properly cleaned and sanitized prior to use. For that, just whether it's One Step, Star San, or whatever food-grade alternative you're using, just follow the manufacturer's directions. Now, of course, there are links to basically most of this stuff in my description and comment sections of the video. And this is what I'm going to be using to make this wine. Well, one of the first things we need to do is we need to get these pomegranate kernels out of the pomegranate. So let's go ahead and start that process. I guess this is where the spoon or the stick comes in. Let's see if this works. Well, kind of, sort of. It's like you're going to be beating this an awful lot. It does <laughs> seem to work. Okay. Well, that's one pomegranate. Okay, if while in the process you run across some pomegranates that have seeds or let's just say areas that you wouldn't want to eat, well, you don't want those in your wine either, so you just might want to just put those aside. All right, that's enough of that. Now, this channel likes to assume that you might not have the latest and greatest time-saving kitchen appliances 
to make your life a whole lot easier. So if this is all you've got or some variation of it, then this is what you got to do. Hey, scoop. It was bird smashing. Now, in doing so, you're going to find out that these things like to spray out droplets all over the place. Uh, I mean, I've got stuff already coming out here. So one way of doing that is to pour a little bit of sugar, which kind of help them absorb some of the splatter, provides a little bit more friction. And you can do it like so. Once you've done a fair amount, then... Um, Get those in a straining bag that's sitting inside a bowl and, um, and grab another batch. Now, if you do have a time-saving kitchen appliance, you might as well go ahead and make use of it. I'm using this anymore. Get out. All right, that having been done, I think I'll get these into measuring cups and find out just how much juice I've actually extracted. Okay, it looks like I'm coming in at six and just a little over half a cup of juice. I would prefer it eight, but six and a half is what I got, and that's what I'm going to work with. All right, in the kitchen, what we want to do is that we want to go ahead and take five cups of our water. Go ahead and put that in our pot. Put a lid back on. Let's bring this up to a boil. With our water now up to a nice and good boil, go ahead and take a half, a half a teaspoon of our bread yeast. Let's just go ahead and sprinkle that in. reason we're putting in a half a teaspoon now is that we want that bread yeast to be good and dead so that it can act as a yeast nutrient to our other yeast that we're going to be putting in later on. I can just go ahead and turn off the heat at this point. And for a moment, I'm going to put the lid back on. All right, let's go ahead and incorporate our four cups of sugar. And with that having been done, let's go ahead and start adding in our pomegranate juice. Try to get as much of it in there as I possibly can. Go 
go ahead and incorporate that. And put our lid back on. And let's let this come down to room temperature. Now that our pomegranate juice mixture has come down to room temperature, let's go ahead and transfer that into our carboy. Right, yeah. and since we're coming up just a little bit short, I want to take the opportunity to do one thing real quick before bringing the level up a bit. One, since I have a cap, I want to make sure that's on nice and tight. And two, I want to go ahead and give that a quick and vigorous shake. Reason being, I just want to incorporate a little bit more oxygen into the mix. And make use of my funnel once again and using some of the remaining water that we started with. Let's go ahead and bring that level up a bit. To about yay high. Now this is a four liter container as opposed to the one gallon. So if you're using a one gallon jug, make your adjustments accordingly. Give that a little bit more of a shake just to incorporate everything. All right. So now it's time for me to take a hydrometer reading. And it looks like that hydrometer reading is coming in at 1.110. Now to begin the actual process of turning our juice into wine, we need to add half a teaspoon of our red yeast. This time alive and kicking. It's kind of hard to spread it around, so we're just going to do what I normally don't do is dump it in. And use my cap for the moment. And kind of swirl it around to incorporate. Now that our yeast is well, technically beginning to rehydrate, coming alive, it's going to eventually begin to produce CO2 while it's chowing down on all of that sugar and oxygen we've got in there. So in order to keep CO2 from building up and becoming an explosive situation, we'll use an airlock. And basically, this is a style of airlock that I normally tend to use. I've got it filled up to the levels with a mixture of water and a little bit of diluted star sand. And again, the purpose of that is twofold. One, to let CO2 escape. And two, keep bugs from getting in. All right, just to keep the record straight, we're going to go ahead and label our creation so that we know what we're doing later on down the road. You know, if we get some basic information, one, we are making a pomegranate Y. And this is the date we started. And usually that's the date that I usually put in the yeast because that's the date where things really start to happen. And it was on 11-11-2023. Our original gravity reading started out at 1.110. And that's really, for me, the basic information I need to keep track of later on down the road. Okay, now that we've started the process of making it, what do we do next? Well, we're going to put this away in a closet, keeping it at relatively cool if possible, but room temperature if that's what you got. And for the next, oh, I'd say four weeks or so, we'll probably keep track of the amount of sediment that's developing at the bottom of the carboy. Uh, part of that's going to be some pomegranate uh, sediment. And the remainder of it is going to be 
I mean, big yeast that's going to begin sealing down to the bottom. I mean, after they've done the roll, propagate it, started making a little bit of alcohol, they will eventually begin to die off. And uh, at that point in time, we'll just go ahead and rack it or transfer it off of that layer of sediment into our secondary carboy. And we'll keep that process going maybe once, maybe twice until we consider the wine to be done. Now, technically, yeah, you could start drinking it after 10 days, but if you want something that looks and tastes a whole lot better, I suggest go ahead and get in and wait for the next several months. Me, I like to do the uh, uh, remaining operations of the process and at about the 11, 12 months uh, stage where I go through the process of taking a final hydrometer reading, then degassing it, back sweetening it, pasteurizing it, bottling it, labeling it, corking, you know, the whole nine yards. And I have standalone long videos for all of that in my wine making operations playlist on my channel page. Um, but beyond that, again, uh, all of the equipment that you see here, you can find links in my Amazon, uh, uh, my Amazon links. I am an Amazon affiliate. And again, this stuff doesn't cost a whole heck of a lot. Recycled materials, wine jars, recycled wine bottles. I will suggest going out and get, uh, spending a few dollars on, on airlocks and bongs. You might want to step up your game and get a hydrometer. But again, uh, if you're going to take this on as a hobby, you can do this all at your leisure. So there we go. If you like what you see here, please click on that like and subscribe button. Better yet, become a member. Better yet, become a Patreon. So I'll see you in 12 months when I do the 12-month taste testing.